Alright guys, welcome to today's video. We are diving back into my first E46 project and today we're going to be covering one of the areas that is quite often overlooked on our builds. I shouldn't say overlooked. We just normally build race cars, we don't build street cars. And one of the most important things in my opinion about a car is the interior because it's where you spend your time, it's the stuff that you touch, it's the stuff that you feel, it's the stuff that you smell. And you could have a car that is a piece of shit on the outside and you'll never know because you spend all your time in the car, you don't see it, you don't feel it, out of sight, out of mind. So one thing that we did with this car off camera, but Matt covered it when he had a cameo on the channel, is I went ahead and put a CAE shifter in here. This shifter was actually ordered for my E36 back when I ran a ZF transmission in it. I never wound up using it and uh, it's a really nice, really cool shifter. I even had an Alcantara thing made for it. So I figured I might as well try it in here. The stock shifter needed the bushings replaced anyway. So haven't driven with it yet, but chassis mount shifters on BMWs are always kind of cool. It's got the cool reverse lockout. So we'll see how it works. And one other thing you might've seen me posting about on Instagram or talking about in videos was doing the headliner. So a guy that I met locally by the name of Jim redid everything in the car. Not only did he cover it with real Alcantara and dye all the little plastics, he actually uninstalled and installed everything for me while I was gone in Japan. So I came home and it looked brand new. The visors came out really good. We wound up deleting the mirrors just because it uh, simplified things a little bit. Back here, we were able to delete the like child restraint things in back to kind of simplify this. But not only is headliner done, A pillars, B pillars, C pillars, and everything that would typically be like gray plastic was dyed. It came out amazing. It all kind of started, not even because this headliner was sagging, it was just kind of like stained and there were some cigarette burns in the, uh, the A pillars. So now that that's done, Pretty much the biggest thing left is dealing with the seats and we have quite the project as it relates to that. To me, one of the most important things about a car is the seat, not only for comfort, because my back kind of sucks, but for the experience of driving the car, the way it makes you feel, your seating position, how it holds you in the seat. Originally, I kind of wanted to ball out and I wanted to do these Recaro podiums in the E46. They also come in like an all black version, but it felt like too modern of a seat for an E46. The played out thing that I could have done that like I would do if I had an E46 M3 or like that you would do if you have a Porsche, do a set of Recaro pole positions, which I feel like is a little bit more fitting, but the bucket seat's a little bit more aggressive than what I would want in like a daily driver. And then one of my all time favorite seats is the Recaro SR3, which is a really comfortable seat. But to me, this is like more of a, a JDM seat. It's kind of wide. Like I feel like it's better suited for a car like this. I could go the bride route, but that's a little bit too JDM. And I'm gonna put a photo on the screen here. I really, really wanted to find a set of G80 carbon buckets. I think it's one of the coolest looking seats ever, but not only are they extremely expensive, I heard a lot of horror stories about them not being the most comfortable seats. I've been spending a lot of time searching on the internet and I'll show you where we landed. Drum roll. <sighs> so what we have here is a set of F80, or technically, I don't know if it'd be an F82 because it's an M4. Um, these seats came out of an M4 GTS. They are essentially competition seats, but I believe the difference with them is they have the Alcantara here and they have the little M stripe. I think that it should have an M3 badge since it's going in a three series, but that's easy enough to change. Benefit of these seats, I looked it up online. It's been done before. You can wire them to work and the brackets require a very small modification. But more than anything, I feel like these seats will look a little bit more at home in an older E46. Yes, they're newer and modern, but they're not as flashy and full of carbon like the G80 seats are. And most importantly, they are quite often talked about as one of the most comfortable seats that ever came in like a sporty BMW. So comfort, good. Style, good. Uh, holding capability, good. Price, mm, definitely could have been better. I think these seats can be had for like four to five grand for a full set. I paid a little bit more because they're GTS seats, but for a modern seat like this with good bolstering, power modules, heated, and with the rear seat included, I feel like it, it could have been worth, man, like, but like just thinking in my head, I could have done those fancy carbon Recaro podiums and it would have been just a little bit more because those seats are very, very affordably priced but this will be cool, it'll be OE, and I'm excited to figure out how to make it work and see what it looks like. Now, I don't expect the rear seat to be an easy affair. I didn't measure anything, I pretty much rolled the dice. I don't know how close the fit's gonna be, I don't know what we're gonna need to modify it, but I'll tell you, we're gonna make it work. Obviously, this is a coupe rear seat that folds. I don't have a pass-through because uh, I don't think, I think it was an option for sedans. It's gonna require some custom modifications. These pieces might need to get shortened or modified, and because this came out of a coupe, 
there's no real finishing edge here, so it's gonna need some sort of like finishing piece added to the sides. Rear seat's in really good shape. The front seats are gonna need some love, and thankfully, Matt Mormon Obsessed Garage is in town, and he's gonna help me give these things a little bit of reconditioning and show you guys if you have a set of seats that has gotten oily and uh, kind of like weathered from people sitting in them, how to make them look brand new again. It's crazy, like these seats literally, like they came out of a car with like sub 10,000 miles, and whoever was in it clearly had an oily butt, and now the seats don't look like they should look like this, not like that. Shine bad, no shine good. Before we start ripping the seats out, I want you guys to get the full vibe check of the car, kind of what it looks like, how the seats, I think the condition of the seats is pretty dang good considering that these are the original seats that came in the car. Like honestly, dude, I was thinking like my butt juice that technically was from 10 years ago is still in those seats and it's kind of cool to have the same seats, but they've also just, they're like, um, it's like so tight. I don't know how to yeah. say it. The leather is like rock hard now. Non-M's, they came with a different leather, so it's more like plasticky, versus the M's is like a lot softer. No, the crayon smells from the undercoating. Really? Yeah, they use a similar wax to Crayola uses. Oh. Yeah, the seats just smell like butt juice. today's edition of more stuff that's awful for my back, we removed the factory rear seat that weighs 5,000 pounds. You wanna be Mike for 10 seconds and I get it out? I'll, mm, mm, I'll, have, I'll have you do it. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Save your back. So, uh, worthy mention that we will not really have any weight savings of changing these seats. It's more looks. And just careful, dude, the paint's mint on this car. Seatbelt I'll remove after it's out of the car. You're doing great, good form. I love the arch in the back. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? No. Mmm, yeah, Mike. Nice tats, dude. Did you unplug it? I'm just kidding, it's not plugged in. I already plugged it. Oh, you turned my lights on, Mike. Did. Yeah, that sucks. Thanks, Mike. This cover's gonna come off somehow. Oh, there's a bolt in back. Kinda looks annoying to get to, honestly. Hey, so we found uh, my missing camera. <laughs> the last time this camera was filmed was when we tuned this car. With Jordan? Yeah, it's been missing since then. <laughs> Look, and I also have evidence of how bad th there's some weird stuff on the headliner. Remember that? Yeah, that was the that was a bug? mustache bug. Yeah. Wow. Mustache bug. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're such a great memory. Yeah, I also I found. I just edited Best of 2023 last week. This is Avocado's uh, power bank under Yo, here, too. Oh, I kind of need that. Full send, brother. Now, I'm already working on a custom bracket solution for the front that's over at Powder Coat right now, so we'll show you that in a moment. In the meantime, I'm going to pull out the rear seat and see how close we are to it working or it being wildly off. What a lot of people will do is they'll take the factory rear seat and they'll reskin it with the material from the other seat. But if I could use a whole seat, I'd be stoked. So it appears as if the mounts definitely are not in the right place, but that's not terrible. It, they're definitely longer. I think I'm gonna need to remove the back to see like how close we are, because this has much more of like an uplip. Yeah. So I'll remove the back and then see where we're at. I just realized I messed up. I should have removed the uh, the old headrest holes because the old headrests aren't going to be going back in. I could probably make some little plastic deletes though because they're built into the other head. Now we can see what we're working with. The corners I feel like need to get reworked, but the front's not that far off. The front actually like hugs tight enough to be acceptable. Okay. So I'm cool with that. The bracket needs to get moved to be in a different spot, but like if this is where it lives, I guess that's inclined up a little bit, huh? It can't lay as flat. So like, let's say that needs to get modified. That yeah. needs to get modified. All right, let's see how the back lines up. So we got a problem. You got some wires showing. No, the height, look. <laughs> Holy crap, that's crazy. So if I, let's say like I theoretically cut out this this ledge because you don't really need it for anything, it's for child protection, then this would sit down more acceptable. I wish I could just like hack into leather stuff, but that's not really how it works. Yeah, like like unwrap it and restaple it or something. So the rear seats are actually pretty cheap on this. This isn't special to the GT. So like I actually feel pretty confident in making my own modifications. The rear seat, I'm curious, can you grab me one of those corner pieces? I wanna see how close we are. So this piece would, I feel like it's, 
like that it's it's workable like that follows the curvature pretty dang good yeah so the bottom seat especially on the corners is gonna need to get reworked a lot if it's just this one piece and everything else can stay the same i think there's hope so what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna see if i can mount the rear use the old bottom cushion if I needed to, and then use the new upper cushion and then just rewrap the old cushion instead of modifying this if it came down to it. In case it wasn't incredibly obvious, I wanna point out that I have no experience when it comes to retrofitting interior. And this is a new venture for me. What I'm doing may be incredibly impossible and make no sense, but we're gonna figure it out together. I'm zip tying this in place. That way I can just see roughly where we're at to see if like this is something that's feasible or if I'm wasting my time. I was ambitious at first, I think, the biggest problem I'm seeing, because this is a coupe seat and it's built up, it's adding a bunch of distance and I think it's gonna push out the rear seat too close. So like this is way closer than the other seat would have been. And like getting these side finishers to match up, the seat, like there's a weird gap here that must be like fixed by something. I guess I can make like a delete for that, but we're, we're pretty far off. Like this looks like a year long project for someone like me. I just think it's one of those things like I could rig it up and I could start cutting stuff and I could bolt it in, but it's gonna look like shit and I'm gonna end up redoing it. So I kind of don't want to waste my time. Front seats, I know I can get mint. I can get yeah. dialed. I can have them working like factory, but I really wanted to do everything at once and have that full package of like a brand new car feel. I feel like if anything, we could take the leather off of the back seats and redo your current back seats. Yeah, but I agree. I think using the shell of the original seats. Yeah and redoing these. I just wish I was, I like, I wanna cover everything on the channel and like upholstery to me is like a black art. I was ambitious, thought I could do this in like an hour. <sighs> Sometimes it'd be like that. When you go into uncharted waters, you don't know what you're gonna find. Usually sharks, jellyfish. Some weird <laughs> lives down in Mariana's Trench, Michael. You see what they look like? A like glow in the dark, spike fish. All right, so new plan is I'm gonna hit up Signature Interior Gym and I'm gonna send him a photo. What we got going on here, I feel like if he's able to reuse, see, I don't know how this would necessarily look, but I feel like if we can incorporate a little bit of this perforated piece, maybe these bottom cushions. I mean, the bottom cushion would be so sick if we can make it work. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send him a photo and say, make it spicy and see what he gives me. This is past my brain grade. You could ask Meta AI. <laughs> Last time I asked them a question, they sucked. I'm not a believer yet. All right, so for this segment of the video, we have stolen Matt Mormon of Obsessed Garage from the house renovation project because I showed him my new M4 seats and he was like, man, these things are rough. They're janked Can up. We straighten it out at least? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I knew that it could look better, but I just accepted that okay, someone sat in these and it was gonna be a little bit shinier than normal. But you think that we can make this shine look like this? Yeah. Yeah, you want leather to be matte or satin, mm -hmm. not shiny. All right, so I'm missing one thing that I need, so I'm improvising here. Uh, I generally recommend you don't do this, but this is an all-purpose cleaner. Mm -hmm. And all-purpose cleaners, it's weird because this is probably alkaline, and yet they call it citrus. Remember from science class, mm -hmm. citrus would be acidic, which would be below 7. But this is probably a pH of the like, 10 or 11, so we're going to dilute it. And we're going to use this brush, which is designed specifically for leather, and we're going to basically agitate it and get the pores clean. And would a leather cleaner, like, what's the reason why you don't want to use a leather cleaner on it? Well, well, just wiping the surface of the leather may do a little bit of surface cleansing, but leather is porous. You know, it's like skin. Uh, and so we need to get in the pores in order to get the shininess out. So we'll do one seat first yep. and then show kind of side by side of what it looks like after we do the OG clean, or I shouldn't yeah. say, the semi-OG clean method. <laughs> this is just the way I do it. I've been doing it for years. And then we're also going to clean the Alcantara. So think about Alcantara. It's a fabric. So think about like your shirt. When you put, it's, it's counterintuitive, when you put your shirt in the in the washer. The soap doesn't clean the shirt. What the soap does is breaks down the dirt. What cleans the shirt is when the soap comes out mm. of the fabric. Uh, and so we're going to use Sonax Alcantara cleaner and we're going to use a steamer. We don't want to soak down Alcantara, uh, but we do need to get it a little bit damp. Uh, so we're going to get the product in, agitate it, and then try to get the product out and the dirt will come with the Interesting. product. So I don't know what the pH of this is. So I'm going to make this like 25%. So normally what you want to use when you're cleaning leather is you want to use a properly pH'd or proper a proper pH when cleaning leather because leather is from a cow and so leather has a certain pH to it. So we're just going to be careful. We really can't hurt anything, but you can mess up the longevity of the leather if you 
go too hard on this. So I like to do the leather first and the Alcantara second because we're going to splash some stuff on the Alcantara. So in the future, if we did, if we if we treat this properly, now there's not much we can do about this now with the products I have, but we could fix this um, with a. <laughs> we could fix this in the future, Adam. We would sand this down uh -huh. and then use a product called uh, Leather Fresh, which is like a dyed finish. But we don't have that, so we're just going to improvise here today. Could get this to foam a little bit. So remember, leather is porous. So this brush is working in the pores of the leather, even though this is what we call coated leather. So they basically spray paint the mm -hmm. color onto this. All right, wipe that for me. Oh yeah, see that? Wow. Pretty legit, huh? Makes a big difference. You know, I almost I almost wanted to buy the M performance seats that you had laying around for this car. You know which Ooh, ones I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, oh I know, yeah. They're like fifteen grand. They're crazy. Well crazy. you got them for a deal, I remember, because I almost got them. No deals. I never get deals on. Give me a white beru there. <clears throat> That's pretty legit, huh? Yeah. yeah. Like it's subtle, it's not like transformative, but that versus that. And then do we condition it when we're done? Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna protect it with leather protector. So if this was an older seat, I would worry more about the stitching, but you can kind of- Just getting just, damaged? Yeah, just don't go over it super aggressively, so you don't want to get it all frayed. I feel like the kid that you don't really trust, so he's just doing the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're the Wait, look at the, look look at the that, difference. dude. Is that not sick or the what? The shine versus no shine. Yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, what percentage did you dilute that cleaner? We did like four to one. It's still a little more aggressive than I'd like. What, um, what's happening because of that? Well, see how it's getting a little bit too matte. So I dumped a little bit more out. I'd say we're probably like six to one now, maybe eight to one. It's hard to, I'm just going off experience of, you know, looking at the, the transition difference there. I just don't like how it seems like it's a little too aggressive. It may look like it, but I'm not really using pressure. I'm just letting the brush do its work. And then I take all the pressure off on the stitching and I let my, my assistant yes, sir. do the wiping. This is how you remove cheeseburger funk from yep. your leather on them. So when you're cruising, eating your Hardee's burger. So I don't have a lot of butt juice oil, but I have a lot of black jean dye. Mm, so like yeah. when I cleaned the seats out of the, uh, the GT3, they were like very, very black on yeah. all the bolsters. Well, that's where um, leather shield comes that so the stuff we're gonna the protector we're mm -hmm. gonna put on here comes in play. So if you were selling like a, a used GT3 and your seats look like this, I feel like you could probably justify getting another five to ten grand oh. more for the car just from cleaning the seats. Well that's the first thing I look at, especially on like M3s, mm -hmm. you know like E92s. Just look at the seat and you can tell if someone took care of it or not. Yep. If they're shiny and then the bolsters are all jacked up, or like this, you know that somebody didn't take care yep. as much. So the seat's looking pretty clean. Let's do the uh, let's do the Alcantara now. So it obviously doesn't look dirty, but I'm, I'm sure, sure it is. Stuff yeah, there's yeah. probably a lot more dirty than we saw that dirt here, right? Yep. In the, uh, in the white foam that's supposed to be white. And so I'm assuming that the Alcantara is even dirtier. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna get the, Del the Alcantara wet. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay. Damp. Cool. Not wet. And then we're gonna take the product. I'll Actually, start, I'll just, start dampening everything. Let's just do this. People that are suspension pros get really triggered when people say dampening. Hmm, that's understandable. It's technically damping, but I think like brands still call them dampening knobs. Yeah. I don't know. I say I say both depending on who I'm around. It's like Porsche versus Porsche. Yeah, I don't really like to say Audi. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, when, I, when I grew up, I was a, I was an Audi. I was an Any. That's <laughs> weird, dude. See the the normal cleaner I use for leather is like uh, is like this where it foams up. Mm -hmm. And we steam it to lift it back out. Yeah, we need to, and then we'll use our towels to try to get as much out of it as we can. Fresh towel will show. Remember, we're effectively lifting the dirt with the cleaner. So we need to get the cleaner and the dirt out. And if you do this often, then hopefully you're out, or not like once every six months or so, then your Alcantara will last longer than the darn leather will. It'd be That's interesting it. to film with a magnifying glass to like really see what's going on with the pores. Yeah. yeah. That'd I'm be cool. There's some, been some people that have done that. You yeah, can yeah, see, yeah. I don't know if it's from wear or from scrubbing, there's like 
development of like yep. little pills in the front. So that, those pills, what happens is that that's Alcantara that's released, but it's just tangled up. Mm. So that's where maybe we can find some, uh, some really fine grit, like probably like... I've got everything. 3,000, 4,000, no, 2,000? No, probably like, 1, like 800. 800? Maybe, yeah, maybe 1,500 would probably 1,500? Yeah. Okay. And we'll sand that after it dries off. So There's some pilling that we have to sand out in the Alcantara. We need to wait for it to dry before we can do that. Yeah. So now we do the protectant. Yeah, so seats, there's a simple simple rule of thumb here. So if seats are older than three years, use leather protector. Okay. If they're newer than three years, use leather shield. Got it. But you always use leather shield, so I just need to send you some. Got it. Um, so we would do protector, let it sit for a couple hours, then put shield on. And shield is what helps with dye transfer and stuff like that. It's designed to work with leather, not clogged and pores. There's all kinds of great detailing companies, CarPro, Gion, you know, all different companies out there that have coatings but I don't think that's a good thing to do. You don't want to you don't want to clog up the pores of the leather because then eventually you're gonna end up with problems. And like you put a coating on your paint, you can polish it off. You can't yep. really get it off. This is obviously not the ideal sponge, but let's see. I think we can make this work. Just make sure we don't hit it with the Scotch card. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a sponge that was had no Scotch card before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it had your tiki masala on it. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> I keep getting that on the, the strings of my sweatshirt. Well, I don't know what that is. Tikka Masala? No. Oh, he doesn't know what Tikka this Masala is, is, guys. We're going down a bad road. Yeah, we are. We gotta, we gotta Am I going to like this or John? not like this? You got dinner plans tonight? Um, no. Love an excuse to give me some nice Indian sizzler. Oh, you have you know, sh shared with that. All right, so yeah. then with this, if you leave it like that, then it's going to look like that. And so mm -hmm. we need to wipe it, not off, but flat. <laughs> A lot of pressure when Matt's watching your detailing stuff. <laughs> Especially, I wasn't paying much attention because I'm prepping for a meeting I'm about to go on, so mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, sh Did I, was I not supposed to swirl it? I'm not very judgy, Adam, I despite know. what you think. You like, you definitely come across as someone who'd be super judgy, but I think okay. if anyone's trying, you don't judge them. No. It's the people that don't try. I don't have a judgment assessment or opinion. Remember our course? Yeah. There's also nothing you should be doing. There's nothing you need to know. And nowhere we to go. Yep. I'd say that's pretty darn good, huh? Yeah. It's subtle. Like if you didn't have that next to it, you'd be like, oh, okay, it's better. The we spent an thing, hour. The biggest thing you notice though is the sheen, especially yeah. side by side. But we're all t always taught shiny's good, right? Well, in leather, it's the opposite. Shiny. Like bad. anything in the interior, I don't like shiny unless it's my glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that versus that. Yeah. And even the uh, the worn spot doesn't look quite as worn, does it? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is the driver's seat too. So we did the driver's seat first. Yeah, it is. Oh, you're right. No, it's your left. Oh, yeah. reasonable AB comparison there, huh? I would say so. I think it's probably one of the first ones I've ever done. I never do that. Yeah. I was wondering if like the tape was not going to be good for the seat or something. Yeah, it's probably not great, but it is painter's tape. Look at that. That's not wild. <laughs> Just from a, what was that, five minutes? Yeah, not even. Five minutes and that's what we took off, all that dirt. Th this, is the, this has been my experience in detailing is the proper way of doing things is oftentimes pretty easy. Mm -hmm. You just have to I mean, I've been trial and erroring my way into this result for a long time. And imagine guys that have been doing, you know, de interiors for a living for, you know, decades. I'm sure they have some tricks that I never even thought of. Brand new towel. Ooh. Yeah. Jesus and I'm telling you, that's not dye. I would know if it was dye. It would look a little different. It would be blacker. That's just straight dirt. Coming out of the list. Okay. 
back. This feels wrong. It's right. It's oh, it's so right though, Adam. So uh, <laughs> this isn't the right. <laughs> this isn't the right. Don't grid. take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> so that seat's done. How did it come it's out? Pretty. I don't think we need to sand that Alcantara. I might just scuff it a little bit. Mm. Uh, but see this here, Mike. Can you get in on this? Like, see the pilling? Kind of like an old school sweater. Yep. Remember those little cheese grater things before you both of your times, but you would like you like buzz it on your shirt and it would pull off all the little balls. I know exactly what you're talking about, but you I've know? never used one. I it's didn't either. I didn't wear sweaters, but it's kind of cool. It. it works on shirts too. Yeah, this clearly isn't the right thing. So color lock <laughs> uh, makes an exact like sponge back. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, sanding block that contours. Now we don't want to hit the leather, so but we want to kind of get the, the pilling off and what we're doing is basically removing some of the fibers. Now you can only do this so many times, just like polishing paint. You can't polish paint a hundred times, eventually you don't have any clear coat left. But you could do this, you know, four or five times. Hmm. So we're pulling off a little yeah. bit of the... And do you only do it in the affected area? Um, again, I'm probably going to do just to scuff the whole thing, but mm -hmm. yeah, you would you would treat the affected area a little bit more because I want to get the fibers out of there. So this is 800 grit. Would you usually use more aggressive or less aggressive? This feels about right. So I'm just kind of pulling the fibers down and pulling them up. But I'm telling you, this seems like it's wrong, but it's... Oh, so right. <laughs> I don't want to say it again. So I could do it on this while you're doing that. Yeah, is that the 800? Yep. Yeah, just don't hit the leather. So I see some minor pillage here. I'm gonna pillage your village. So you kind of just do it and then just look to see if they're gone. Yep. I would never think of doing this. I didn't either. I thought I was just I was just always replacing parts, and I was talking to uh, the guys from Colorlock had come to visit me, and we were like restoring a steering wheel and an M5, and I'm like, yeah, I see all that Alcantara. I'm just gonna buy like a new. He says, hold on, give me one minute. And he went out to the car, brought in the sanding block, and he went shh, 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 swipe back and forth. It's perfect. It's like, okay, I'm sold. So even if you just, when yeah, you, when I mean, you clean your- I'm pretty happy with that already. When you clean your Alcantara, even if you just do a couple of swipes, it cleans it up. Yeah, this one isn't really bad at that all. That one doesn't need it, I don't think. Maybe just a little scuffing. Yeah, there's nice a little stuff. bit here. I want to try this on just like a random wheel, just to see what happens. Well, you have to do all the cleaning first. Do you? Yeah, that's how much dirt. Oh, well. Came out of the seat, we were able to like. Dare we do it to the old seat? <laughs> so now, to treat these regularly, you could use your regular, like Griot's interior cleaner wipe, mm -hmm. to wipe it down. I think Griot's interior cleaner is the best interior cleaner on the planet. And, uh, and then every, say, six or eight months, if you have seats that really care about, you do a uh, color lock mild cleaner with the brush, and then just add shield, not protection cream. So if you continue to maintain it, you should never really need protection cream ever again. All right, now we're gonna dig into the seat belts. And what most people would do with a seat swap is you take the buckle from the old seats because it matches the seat side. However, as you can see, these are pretty weathered. These look very nice and new. So I wanted to see if I could modify the seat belt buckle to work with this. Now it's something that we do on some of the Nissans and some of the older cars, and usually you can get away with shaving off a little bit, modifying a hole to make it work. Luckily we have an F80 M3 on property, so I was able to sketch out the E46 buckle, sketch out the F80 buckle, and realize that all it is is slightly thinner and a little bit deeper. What I did, I took a buckle out of a parts car because I didn't want to sacrifice my seat buckle, and I just tested it. I shaved it down a bit, and I uh, wanted to make sure that there's still enough metal to be happy and safe with it. And sure enough, I was able to shave it down from this to this size. And now it works like perfect. So I'm gonna show you the process for that. It's actually very easy, but there's a couple tricks that will make it take a lot less time. Now, what you would normally do is you'd take this, you would cut it out and that would be your template. But since I have this and I know it works, I'm gonna use this as my template. So we'll take the stock buckle, I will lay it over, and then I'm gonna use a Sharpie to mark roughly what needs to be cut in terms of thickness. So not perfect, so I'm gonna clean up this line a little bit, and this one will go a little deeper. And then I know from uh, playing around with this one in a few iterations, it's important that this goes down further. So I'm gonna bring this down here, and then kind of blend it in. I don't wanna get it in the plastic, and I don't need to, but this stuff definitely needs to go. Now this is the trick that helped me the most. Grinding a flat surface like this and making it look nice can be a bit of a challenge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a vise, which I so handily have readily available like this. We're gonna put it in and we're gonna use the top of the vise as our guide. So I'm gonna close it and then basically grind until it's flush with the top of the vise.
and we have a shave down side. Now we do the other side, let's see how it comes out. And now we test. So what we're running into as an issue here, I need to shave it down more on the edges because it's not allowing it to fully engage because these little metal edges are pressing into it. So I will need to shave this down almost flush with the plastic, but I'm not concerned because the metal actually goes quite a bit deep in here. Now, technically speaking, if you were really good at sewing and you had confidence in that, you could undo these and you could reattach them or try to use FAD seat belts. But what I'm doing is like the backyard mechanic method. I don't advise it. I don't insure you. I do not condone my own behavior on camera, but I'm documenting it because I don't care what people think. All right, the moment of truth. Oh, I thought we had success. We have success. However, it's still not engaging fully, so I think I'm gonna take a little bit more of this plastic off. All right, moment of truth. Let's see, does she click in? She clicks in. Heck yeah. And I think uh, it doesn't look too bad. So, we've addressed this challenge. I obviously have one more side to do. Now the next part is where I kind of f***ed up. If I was smart, I would have gotten sedan seats and that would have made my life a lot easier. But because these are coupe seats, I don't have a, a coupe to show you, but typically in BMWs, the coupes have this lower part of the belt on a loop and that attaches in the back here on a slider. So that way when you move the seat back or forward, it kind of moves on the floor. I was gonna try to retrofit a coupe seat belt in this car. I looked, there's no mounts in the chassis that I could use for like a coupe lower seat belt mount. So what we're going to do is see if we can repurpose the mount from the E46 seats and bolt them onto this seat so we have somewhere to mount the seatbelt. Basically what we need is something that can come out here that the seatbelt can attach to. Um, the problem is the actual bracket on the other seat is like flush here because the seats are less wide. So it's going to require some custom stuff. Now I hate the idea of cutting my first seats from my first car. However, they're probably going to sit up on a shelf forever. I'm never going to look at them again. and. I want to do this as close to OE as possible. So my idea was to use this part of the bracket. So not only does it match up perfectly with the lower seat belt and have like the kind of guides and already have the recessed uh, nut welded in place, there's a chance I might be able to use a portion of this cover to kind of hide it and give it the OE look. So what I'm going to do, as I showed, it was way, it needs to stick out way farther on the other bracket. So I'm going to cut this off and then I'm going to see if Owen can weld me uh, an extension so that way I can get this to come out a little bit farther and then we'll have our mount first seat belt. It'll be a little bit harder to see on the seat, but essentially what we want is this to land something like this. Now we have two factory holes that we can work with on the seat. The seat's actually in its full forward position right now. So I'm gonna feeler gauge out of aluminum that I bent 90 degrees. We want it to be about like this. So what I, what I do is I make things out of cardboard and aluminum and then I give them to the fabricator so they can do the welding because <laughs> I'm not very good at that. And especially when it comes to safety, I want it to be done right. So what Owen is doing right now is he's cutting me out a square that will be a little bit wider than this. It'll get welded to here and then triangulated and then there's two bolt holes that we should be able to just bolt this in place, hook the seat belt up like stock, and then maybe put the plastic cover over and see if it looks half decent. All right, now I'm in luck because the thing that was daunting me the most was the wiring for these seats. They have a fancy factory connector, and although there is a write-up, it is pretty tricky. It's confusing. There's CAN bus involved, and I happen to have a BMW wiring genius in the house, Adam from HTG. Hello. So what you doing right now? Oh, uh, looking for, for schematics. And now I more likely know what I have to do to make it work. Yeah, so let's get to wiring. What's the, what's the challenge of this in regards to the CAN bus system? Does it need like so, a wake up message? So apparently what I need know is this box will wake up on any CAN message so we can basically trick it to, to work as soon as we uh, send any message. We will try to do it some simple way, but first we need to figure out what is the pin out of this big connector. There is one risk involved. Mainly we have explosives elements like these uh, buckles and the airbag in the inside the seat. So unplug those? So, yes, yeah, so we need to make sure that they don't go off because that would make a really bad day. <laughs> 
Um, one other thing too, uh, because these seats were expensive and there's a good chance they could get sold at some point, rather than cutting up the connector on the seat, Duarte was able to source a set of factory connectors. So Adam's already sort of taken them apart, but this is from a F80 part out car. And basically now we have exactly what we need so we can retain the stock plug instead of having to modify it and use a bunch of ghetto connectors. So we'll unwrap this and I guess we'll start to dig into the wiring. Yeah, so these two will be power and ground for sure. This one could be wake up. We have three pairs of twisted wires. So we have like this. This I suppose is... The airbags and explosives? No, this one is canvas. And those two I, su I think are for uh, airbags and... Uh, that would make sense. Cause I know these, these top two on this one appear to be for the airbag and then the top two on the other one I traced and those ones also go to the side airbag so I think you'd be right. So we need to remove those. Yep. So now we're stripping the wires for the airbags. He asked me to film because he's like hey just in case the airbag goes off I want to get it on camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hopefully that's not what's gonna happen. Oh, yeah I hope it doesn't happen. What you get in the box? Multimeter. You fly with that? Yes. Guys in Drift HQ told me that it's a Pelican case. Probably you have Glock in there. Well, no, you don't have Glocks in Poland. So. You're just gonna send power to it? Uh, measure the resistance. Oh. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> I jumped a little. Did it do something? Nothing. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if the buckle maybe isn't doing whatever it needs to do because it's a bigger size. Do you have the F F80 buckle? We would need to go get one out of an F80. Actually, so here, here's the thing, right? Let's say that's the problem and we get the F80 buckle and it works. I can't be f***ed to go and put F80 buckles in this car. So I'm gonna give you a challenge. Do you think you can make it think that I'm sitting in the seat all the time and that the seat's always buckled regardless yeah. of whether it's buckled or not? Yeah. Cool. So you want just to disable the chime? Yeah. I don't know if we should put that on the internet, <laughs> Mike. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna go out there and say, if you can see there's two little shiny things in the corners. So what I think happens is on this factory style buckle, it's actually this flare, like this edge in here that sits and rests and grounds it out and tells it that the seat's buckled, which I probably just grinded too much. Look. I don't wanna scratch it on the table, but sick. Small success, right? Yeah, I think it's timing out though. Like I have to keep pressing the button. Do you think it has to do with the can signal? Like it only does in increments? Maybe it's on the volts. Maybe. So I do notice as well, I did read online the last guy that did it, he couldn't get the lumbar to work. It'd be sick if we could get the lumbar to work. Look. We have light. How cool is that? Heck yeah. Figure the wire out for that, that was the purple guy. Okay. Now we can figure out what this red one does. You're just gonna send power to it, YOLO? YOLO. I think I feel it. I think I do, like I'm not even lying. It's hard to tell, but I swear I heard it. So we were talking about the uh, seat buckle airbags, right? Uh huh. Look what I found. See this? Mm hmm. Look. It was already like that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So what does that mean? That the seat belt blew up and someone cut it and replaced the igni igniter with the resistor, which is pretty, actually, actually this is pretty typical what they do. Huh, well, I'm glad it works, or I should say, I'm glad the seat buckles still, <laughs> so, you know? I just wonder if they are retracted or fully functional. So it's interesting that that went off, but the seat airbag didn't go off. Maybe that was like a uh, very light yeah. front collision, so. That's a good point. <laughs> So I'm gonna be installing the seats now. The only thing that we have left to do, which I'm probably gonna to do tomorrow, uh, we have to go to the wiring store and get some stuff. In order to keep the seats awake, they need a five volt reference and we don't have anything to turn 12 volts into five volts. So we're gonna tackle that tomorrow, but I can install the seats and I will be able to use them. I'll just need to technically disconnect the battery after I they time out and then wait 30 seconds and then they'll work again. Mom didn't raise a bitch. I will install my own seat get the satisfaction. The problem is the seat like is adjusted all the way. We lost the pigtail because it was in the car. <laughs> <laughs> the seat plus the steering wheel and everything looks really nice. Don't tell me until I get the chance to see it.
satisfying. Who would have thought power seats is such a big flex? And then, obviously didn't mount the seat belt yet, but it'll clip on right here. I'll come over, I'll clip on like this. Boom. Money. Like factory. That's so sick. This side I still gotta pop the brackets on, but I can finally look. guys for watching this video uh, I'm very very happy with the seats not only with how they look they're very very comfortable even just sitting on the first time I'm like oh. I will fill you guys in once we get to doing the rear seat and get that all dialed in but for now I'd say the interior is 99% of the way done I want to see if I can source some cool rare uh, e46 sedan interior trim I know there's like the ZHP cube stuff but a lot of it's sometimes damaged so if you got some that you have laying around message me on Instagram Maybe I'll buy it from you, or maybe I'll just ooh and ah, and then ask you if it's still available. Also, uh, the head unit, I'm still a little bit torn. I feel like I don't need CarPlay, uh, so I kind of want to leave the stock head unit. I like how everything looks. I don't know if you could tell in that montage, but I spent a little bit more time trimming stuff to kind of hide the CAD shifter. Front bumper's on, as you saw, and the hood is getting sprayed today, so hopefully I will be able to enjoy the car this weekend. That's kind of the goal. I could try the new shifter, try the new seats, dial in the tune a little bit more with Jordan, and uh, as we are commuting, since we're no longer living here, I really want to be daily driving this. So, one step closer, the bumping and thumping, all the way from Duncan. This is how you remove cheeseburger funk from yep. the leather on him. Tikka Masala? No. Oh, he doesn't know what Tikka Masala is, guys. <laughs> yeah, we are. We gotta, we gotta Am I gonna like here. this or not like this? You got dinner plans tonight? You're just gonna send power to it? Uh, measure the resistance. Oh. Bam!